So you're thinking about making the move from Indiana to the great state of Michigan. Well, in this video, I'm going to break down why this state is number two out of 50 for inbound residents moving to Michigan. Let's get to it. What's going on everyone, Andrew McManaman here with Living in Michigan and your all-time favorite Michigan realtor, helping people all over the country move to the great state of Michigan. So if that's your cup of tea, don't forget to do your thing below and reach out anytime if you need any help doing so. As I mentioned, in this video, I wanna talk about Indiana and the top reasons why you should move to Michigan as soon as possible. And before you think about clicking off this video because I'm biased being a Michigander, I encourage you to stay because I'm breaking down the facts and what real people People are saying about the state they live in. According to data collected by Stacker.com, 11,026 people move from Indiana to Michigan, which is among the top five states that residents of Indiana tend to go to. In 2021, Forbes came out with a list of the most fun states in America, and Michigan landed number 19 on the list, whereas Indiana found itself sitting at number 38. Of course, these numbers don't mean anything until we understand the metrics that were used here. WalletHub provided this report by incorporating 26 six different metrics from the cost of a movie and national park accessibility to casinos per capita and other cost-effective options. This list was created after the pandemic, which forced people to stay within their homes and people just wanted to have some fun again. A lot of sources say not everyone can make it as a Hoosier, which is what residents of Indiana call themselves. They have extreme weather, a lack of attractions, competitive sports fans, little to no beaches, flatter terrain. Touching on the points I just mentioned, Michigan shares the weather factor. They have a lot of attractions. There's nothing wrong with competitive sports fans. We have endless beaches and anything but a flat terrain. And every city has a completely different culture and way of life, even if it is just 10 minutes down the road. These factors might not seem huge to you, but when you compare two similar states, it makes all the difference. I made a few videos recently comparing Ohio and Michigan along with California and Michigan, which I will link in the description below. And when talking about Ohio, it shares a lot of the same qualities and features that Michigan does. Well, Indiana tends to be the same in that regard since each one of these states are neighbors of one another. For example, the weather we all face in the winter, having a relatively low cost of living, great universities, but as I mentioned in the Ohio video, Michigan stands out a little more among the rest due to the natural landscape that this state offers. From the endless beaches to parks, great lakes, and so much more. After doing more research and finding out what residents say about the state of Indiana, I decided to check out what city was ranked the best place to live in Indiana according to niche.com, and that came out to be Carmel. Carmel, Indiana was ranked at the top of the list, so I figured I would see what bad things there are to find about such a prestigious city from what they say. Most residents simply stated there wasn't a lot to do. This particular resident said there's nothing attractive about this place but went on to say that at the same time it's a great and wealthy place to live. A little contradicting I might say but this is categorized under things to do, not necessarily what there is to see. The next resident talks about how the traffic is awful and goes on to say the city is full of high maintenance individuals but the schools are great. This next resident talks about how there are very few outdoor spaces to do activities since a lot of the areas are becoming residential areas. That takes me back to my comparison of the natural landscape and parks and recreation offerings in the state of Michigan. It may not be that important to you, but it definitely is for a lot of other people. Indiana leads the nation for the amount of toxic chemicals their factories release into the state's waterways. There's one factory in particular that accounts for more than 83% of the toxic releases into Indiana's water, and that is AK Steel Corp, which releases so many nitrate compounds into the Ohio River over the years that it climbed the charts for studies just like this. 10 years ago, the factories in Indiana released over 21 0.6 million pounds of toxic chemicals into the rivers, lakes, and streams. And that number is 5 million more pounds than the second highest state on the list, Virginia. For those of you that don't know the effect of toxic water levels this high, it's known to cause blue baby syndrome, where not enough oxygen is in the blood. And granted, in general, over 90% of the patients are living past the age of 20, and the mortality rate within 30 days is less than 1%. But with levels as high as the ones I mentioned, it can most definitely lead to death. Of course, in Michigan, we have faced a similar issue during the Flint water crisis where the 
lead pipes were neglected for so long, people coming together all over the country to give Flint residents water bottles since the water wasn't safe to consume or cook with. The Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy did announce that the city of Flint's water system has entered its sixth consecutive year of meeting state and federal standards for lead in drinking water. Another thing I want to touch on is motivation. As I have mentioned in previous videos, Michigan tends to be fairly relaxed and not hustling and bustling every second of every day, whereas the larger metro areas have adopted that mentality. I always say it depends on who you surround yourself with, and it's hard to say a whole state is famous for being this way, but I have heard more times than not that Indiana is a sedentary state. There are reports that only 47.5% of the population exercise frequently, which is actually the fourth lowest in the country following West Virginia, Alabama, and Arkansas. Don't get it twisted, this isn't to do any body shaming of any kind, it's purely to put some insight on an aspect that is most definitely important to a lot of people. And let me break it down for you with an example real quick. Let's just say there was a city like the dystopian world that the cartoon movie WALL-E creates, where life has this abundance of leisure in outer space. People are on their little hover cars, extremely obese, eating and drinking garbage food until they fall asleep. Chances are you probably won't see any health food places in there, a gym, a supplement store, or anything of that nature. That goes for cities within our nation too, because when a business is planning their next location, it's obviously strategic and based on the demand of the product or service they have. If a city is notorious for having drive-through traffic wrapped around a street six times, they probably are all about fast food. On the other hand, if there's a lot of heavily populated gyms, tropical smoothie cafes, supplement stores, etc., then you can get an idea of whether businesses will succeed and won't in a city. The moral of the story here is if you're someone who's all about the fast food chains, this is something to look for. If you're a health nut, this is also something for you to look for. For me, as a frequent gym goer, I wouldn't want to drive 45 minutes just to get to the only gym in town. So understanding the city's dynamic is very crucial. One of the biggest reasons and why 66% of people are leaving Indiana is due to job related reasons, while the remaining percentages are between leaving for family or retirement, which is pretty typical. Another thing I wanted to touch on more in depth is the low cost of living in both states. Indiana actually beats out Michigan in the cost of living department, and I'll show you this quick clip of the price differences of normal goods and services for both states. They aren't drastically different by any means. Most of the goods and services differ by a few cents or even a few dollars. So when deciding which state to turn to, this is hardly part of the conversation as they are so similar. Again, it comes down to what's, what the state offers. And after looking into why people dislike Indiana, the biggest reason is the lack of things to do. So why not pay similar prices for your day-to-day -day life in a state that offers more. Michigan is continuing to grow rapidly as years go on, but of course there's pros and cons as there are with any city or state across the nation. But one thing's for sure, the popular science magazine has given it a seal of approval by noting that Michigan will be the best place to live in America by 2100. I'll only be 102 years old by then, so I'm looking forward to that time. For those of you that have made the move to Michigan from Indiana or are simply staying put in Indiana, what have your experiences been like? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any more questions about making the move to Michigan, don't hesitate to reach out anytime. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If it provided you some value, please give it a thumbs up, tap the subscribe button, and hit the little bell so you never miss out on an upload. I'll see you in the next one.